All right, so in today's video, we're going to be talking about the difference between the legit Wilcox G24 and uh, some of its uh, less than uh, ideal, though less expensive counterparts. Uh, in front of you, you see a legitimate Wilcox box. This is how the G24 ships. You can see that it's got their contact information, branding, etc. ITAR restriction, very standard. Now this is not particularly fancy packaging, but uh, like many government products, it's not to the highest quality bidder, but to the lowest viable one. The mount literally just shows up in paper like this, so really nothing particularly special. Uh, but the mount itself is actually a, a pretty substantial piece. So as you can see here, it's the uh, tan model of the Wilcox G24. These do come in black as well. Uh, tan is what you'll see uh, more often than not uh, with military contractors, uh, police, etc. Now, really all this thing is is a hinge. Now, it's a very advanced hinge, and it does a number of jobs, especially well. Ah, cable. Got to match the cable. Jobs exceptionally well. Uh, really what it does well is hold night vision uh, in a modular way, fully adjustable and close to your face in a way that doesn't wobble, rattle, or break off unless you wanted to. We'll get to that later. So yeah, as you can see, really all it is is just a fancy hinge with a number of adjustments, and that's all it really needs to be. Now, basic manual of operation here. Typically on a helmet, you're going to have it stowed in this upright position. This keeps it, uh, it being the night vision, especially close to your face. Keeps mass as close to your head as possible. The more mass that you have cantilever in front of your head, uh, the more strand is going to be put on your neck. Now in the down position, you can see here they actually also have a QR code for the manual if you happen to need it. Very 21st century. Uh, it'll be mounted essentially as so on the helmet. Now you've got a number of adjustments here as not everybody's heads are shaped the same and not all helmets mount at the same height. Now if you need to change height, you've got a switch here that allows for a, a pretty significant degree of up and down travel. And lock that in place. If you need the night vision device further away from your head, you can just depress these two buttons, slide forward or backwards. The operation is very smooth. And if you need to tilt up or down in order to accommodate your particular line of sight, you can twist and get much more subtle angle changes. Now, one of the interesting features of the G24 is this breakaway. I'm going to see if we can get that to focus. Now, if this breakaway is engaged, that means that if sufficient force is exerted upon the mount when it's mounted to the helmet, that will actually break away, fall away, and preserve your neck and spine. Now, these units aren't very cheap. They retail close to $500. They resell uh, usually around $400. People do resell them, but uh, typically if you're running night vision in the modern era, you're going to be running one of these units. Now, a lot of people hear $500 and they get a little bit panicky, and they look for alternatives. Everybody does in the gun hobby. Now, this is your alternative. Comes in nicer packaging than the $480 government contract uh, version of the product. As it says right there, L4G24. Yet, uh, this is just a cheap Chinese copy. Though at first pass, you wouldn't really be able to tell. It ships as such in a foam padded case, a lot like an EOTech. Just get this out of the way here. And in a lot of ways, except for a shiny finish, which most people probably wouldn't notice, this looks like a Wilcox product. It has Wilcox branding. It has essentially uh, the same NSN and cage code. We can actually compare and contrast that later. But again, same adjustments. Hinges, locks positively, up and down. Forward and backwards, fairly smoothly. And even has that fine adjustment for angle. This even features a breakaway, though I couldn't guarantee if that's specced properly. It is a lot grittier to engage. But in terms of build, this at first pass seems fairly similar. This is chalkier, it's a different coating. This is more of an anodized look. They are a little bit different in terms of size. They're definitely different in weight. And the new G24s have as much travel, I believe, as the G22s, allowing you to have more control over how far out your nods go. Two plungers operate very similarly. It's not a exact clone, but it's fairly close. And they use a lot of the same materials. You can see on here you have standard Phillips, and on here you have hex. 
but on both, for the most part, uh, you're going to have hex screws. Now, the real difference comes in when you try to mount any night vision device. Now, one of the things that uh, you'll notice on any night vision device is if you have a substandard mount, I'm not saying that this is non-viable, but if you decide to use something more old school, like a Rhino, this is just sort of a, a standard old school Rhino. It's just overcome by force, there's no buttons. This was the gold standard for a long time. A lot of guys used it to great effect. See the Narodos branding. Helmet mount. You have your adjustment, forward and back. And these can run you as little as, you know, 40 or $50 on TaxSwap or eBay. And they're sometimes, but less frequently faked. Now the interface for something like this would be just an old school J-arm that would hold your PVS-14. Now this is actually fairly stiff, but you can see the movement there. That is not a particularly ideal or tight lockup. Uh, it does work, but you can minimize that wobble tremendously by going to something like a legitimate G24 using an appropriate Wilcox dovetail. A shoe there fits right in, and that lockup is very, very tight, as you can see. Now, when deployed, this means you're going to have a lot less wobble. You're going to have a more stable image. And if you're running, jumping, hiking, etc., LARPing, basically, then uh, you're going to have a better time with something like this. Now, you might ask, why spend $500 when you can get something visually very similar, like this from China, for 100 bucks? Well, the issue is, this does not retain, does not click. You can try to shim it, but it will not properly lock up. If you go to something like the legitimate mount, you try to pull, you won't be able to release it without using the button and releasing the unit. Now, in practice, what does this mean? Well, in practice, it means if you're going to spend $100 on retention, you should probably spend some money on bungees and keep your night vision attached to your face so that it doesn't fly off. An interesting counterpoint to this is this is a set of bridged PVS-14s using a TNVC lightweight mount. And with this Chinese knockoff, with their dovetail, it actually does fit. If I try to pull apart, it won't come apart. Now, why is this an imperfect solution? Well, if you go and you look, you can see that it will wiggle tremendously. And with this much weight, the PVS-14s bridge being something like 30 ounces, not exceptionally ideal. Is it usable? It absolutely is. I've used it myself to absolutely fine effect. It's not ideal, and I don't think I would trust this with my neck or with several thousand dollars worth of night vision. Ultimately, if you go to the legitimate unit, lock it into place. That is rock solid at the shoe. There's no discernible movement. If there is, it's very, very slight and significantly less. One other thing to take in consideration with the standard Wilcox J-arm or I-arm when you fit these in is you can run this button to the side and that is an automatic off when you stay your night vision. Now, while the fake does have a very similar hole here to the side, this will not fit the standard magnet that comes with the kit and will not positively retain this. That'll just come right out. So in general, if you want to buy Chinese, you're going to be gambling in some way or another. You can buy the knockoff. I've used them with my duels before. Uh, I was not able to use them with a single PVS-14. I was still using the old school unit at that point, the old Narodos, which, again, if you're looking for a cheap solution, buy that for $40 or $50 if you're running a, a single tube. If you're going to a dual tube, something like this will sort of work, but ultimately the quality, or lack thereof as you can see, will ultimately let you down going into the future. Buy once, cry once. Buy American. Get something that'll last you forever. And if you need to, you can always resell it for a little bit less than you paid for it, or if you bought used exactly what you paid for it. Not a particularly bad trade.